Welcome everybody to the So You Wanna Get Fat podcast. I am your host, not your typical chef, Brian Sow. And with me today is my co-host, Frenchy. Frenchy. How, short, how short of an intro that, is that? That was pretty short. All right, how you doing, buddy? We're keeping it short and yes, sweet. Yes, yes, yes. Frenchy, where are, we, where are we coming from right now? Where are we filming? This beautiful studio, this near complete studio. Near complete, but it's, it's look damn good. It's looking damn good. It's looking professional. Yes. Like so much so that I, like, I wanted to show people. Well, buddy, we just got back. I'm from a pretty boy too. Don't you're, don't you're, leave it. Don't leave me out of it. You're you're my pretty boy. Okay. You're always my pretty boy. Just need that one person to like <laughs> show you that support. That's all you need, guys. Buddy, one, we just got one back. person. We just got back from Guga's. We just got back from Miami. This is your first time meeting Guga. How'd you like it? I, I think I had fun. <laughs> Did you have fun? I had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, we had a blast. It, we were there for essentially, I would say, two and a half days. You know, we we're there for. Well, well we made the most by yeah. leaving on the red eye Sunday night. Yes. So that we were ready to go early. Monday morning. Monday morning. Yes. So we did all of Monday, yeah. all of Tuesday, and we did so well that on Wednesday, we filmed, we filmed even more stuff. We filmed two more videos. So yeah. in, in uh, two and a half days, guys, we filmed seven videos, four videos for Google, three videos mm. for my channel. We had an absolute blast. And uh, you know what? I'm going to roll a little clip of our trip to Miami no way. with Google. Yeah, yeah. Um, you Jordan, got a clip ready? Yeah, yeah. Jordan put together a clip. No. no well, it's not edited yet. Oh. <laughs> put it on. Let me see. No, no. It's not I'm ready actually, yet. It's oh, not edited. Oh, shit. Yeah. I want to see it. <laughs> Fuck. So we're going to do some movie magic. Movie magic. magic. And Fuck. You got out. me all excited. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's not I'm ready like, yet. Shit. Well, actually, I may have some clips. No, it's not edited yet. No, okay. Should, never right. mind. All right. Anyway, but the audience gets to watch it right now. now. All together. H11. Wait. No, we're H12. Oh my god, how far is H12? <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> Frenchie, Frenchie, we've I, landed. I think that plane was older than me. <laughs> we've landed. How are you feeling, buddy? Oh, a little tired. Did you feel that moisture? Yes, I did. I can see it on you. <laughs> Damn. We've made it. Are you having a good time, buddy? No, we made it. I made it a long time ago. <laughs> we made it. Did you think that the studio was gonna be like this, Richard? I didn't think it was, I thought, it, I, I, you know, I was compounding everything into one room. I didn't realize when I got here, it's everything's in us. Everything is plenty. That's that's the real luxury. Is the, like everything's there's like everything's all in separate places, you know? Right. That's what's nice. Everything is nicely organized. That's, I guess that's what you're trying to say. And and then how we were saying, and like like you soon you like you're trying to get all the stuff in for all the sections, so you don't have to like cannibalize it. Like everything should be in all the sections. Exactly. That's the key here. So we can run multiple things at, at the same, same time. Right? Hey Siri, turn on. You have that on Siri? One second. No way. What's up, Brian? I'm yeah, ready right to eat your food. We are. I'm filming your camera, filming you, and Frenchie's filming me, filming the camera, filming you guys, and Howard over there is filming Frenchie, filming me, filming your camera, filming you. That's a lot. <laughs> Here and there, bro. That's a lot. I just thought of a nice right. idea for the restaurant. Little mini yeah. trays like that and put it on the table for the customer like that. Yep. Alright, Frenchie. It was a eventful three three days in Miami. How are you feeling? I'm good now. <laughs> uh, how many videos did we do? No clue. Yeah, of course you have no clue. We filmed six videos in two and a half days. I would call that productive. Is it? Just keep drinking, old man. All right, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, little trip 
a little adventures with uh, the Beastie Boys, with the So You Want to Get Fat podcast. Lots of cool content to come. Is this a preview? It is a little preview. Is it like a trailer? Yeah, it's a behind the scenes thing. Do you do like sound effects and you have to hire that guy? We can, we can. Like, Jordan, can you put a little ha-ha in there? <laughs> no, who's the guy from Movie Phone, remember? Uh -oh. go, yeah, yeah. Oh, Thank you for calling Movie Phone. You should get yeah. that guy to do this. Yeah, we can't afford that yet. Anyway, guys, take care. See you later. Can't wait for you to see the content. Take care. Cheers, brother. Do I look good? Do I look good? All right, everyone. Hope you enjoyed those clips. Uh, we are definitely looking forward to going back eventually. I don't know if by the time this podcast comes out, if those episodes will be out. But I'm confused it, about the that the whole timing. Like, I know I, I'm I'm to the point where I'm forgetting what we've done. Same here. We have a lot of episodes right? banked up. Yes. And then, and then I guess it's like what this is what actors must be used to. Like they must shoot something and shit doesn't come out for years sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And then like by the time it comes out, they they're watch like, the movie, they're like, they're like, I don't remember that. I don't remember. Yeah. I, I actually, like sometimes I'm like, I'll watch something that you put, I'm like, I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember any of it. I'm like, I only remember. But why do I not remember it is the problem. <laughs> well, usually, usually, when you and I are together, there's a lot of booze boozing going on. But I, we haven't done that in a while. We have, but I've been taking it easy. I have a baby coming. I don't want to like, you know, I, I, I need to be at a hundred percent. Pussy, 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 pussy. <laughs> all right, man. I have babies coming all the time. You don't yeah. see me like <laughs> slowing down. Well, you want me to, you want me to be like this? You want me to act like this? You know? Oh my God. I want to comment so bad. <laughs> I want to comment so bad. Comments. I'll take, no, you take the lead on this one. <laughs> you know who this is, right? It's, it's Gangnam Sai. Yeah, just Gangnam said it. Yeah, yeah. It's, he it's is. Sai. He's still, what's his name? Psy. Oh, it's a, oh. Short I, for like Psycho. Oh, I thought it was Gangnam. I oh, thought his, thought name, his was Gangnam. name was Gangnam. Oh, you thought his name was Gangnam? Sorry. No, Gangnam. Gangnam is an area in Seoul, Korea. A very famous area in Seoul, Korea. Is this his, is, is this a one trick pony or is he famous for other stuff? Well, in America, he's a one trick pony. He's known for the song Gangnam Style. over there, style. he's huge. Over there, he's, well, fuck, I mean, come on. <laughs> Look at that audience. It's insane. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Is that real? Yeah. That's legit. Dude. Yeah. People have this, cons con like a weird idea of what famous is. People think that like American celebrities are famous. No. I mean, no. that's just one country in the planet. I mean, think of the population of India. Imagine you're famous in India. I mean, this is South Korea. South Korea is this, is this big. But it translates over a lot of countries. Oh yeah, yeah, big time. So like, I would rather be a celebrity in on the Asian continent, yeah, technically than any place else. Actually, I think Asian is the biggest demographic, right? Like I, if you I, were to be, I, 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 I won't fight you on. If that. you were dependent yeah. on like social, like um, being a celebrity, yeah, I think Asia would be the one you want to be. One hundred percent, right? One hundred percent. I mean, I've been contemplating, you know, if I have if I had more time, taking Korean classes to brush up on my Korean, you know. I mean, there's opportunity there, baby. But you know, I just don't have the time right now. So yeah, I have I have no desire to be a big celebrity in France. I don't think anyone <laughs> has a desire to be a big celebrity in France. But I could. <laughs> in fact, I think I'm like the next best thing. I, I came out of there. <laughs> oh man. Anyway. Um, anyway. But actually, you know what? what? I actually do. You know the mm. French singer Charles Aznavour? Mm. Who that? Uh, he, if you hear the tunes, like he was voted a celebrity of the century by or, or CNN. How, how, do you, above, how do you spell this? How do you spell this? Uh, Aznavour, A Z, A Z, Az, A Z, Az, A Z N A A V O U R. Oh, Aznavour. Yeah, Charles Aznavour. So this, this guy. Dude, oh, I, I know the face. Yeah. All right. Is oh, listen to this. Okay. 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 The, this is La Boheme. Oh, I get chills. Look at this. Look, look at this. At, look at look at the confidence on this guy. He he has to have like a 14-inch dick. Je vous parle d'un temps que les moins de 20 ans ne peuvent pas connaître. Just looking right. He's, he's looking right into the souls of the audience. Dude, I look. I get goosebumps. Look at my hair standing yeah, up, it. dude. I was surprised. Like I knew he was big, but CNN declared him.
the celebrity of the century. Bigger than Elvis, bigger than Michael really? Jackson, bigger, yes. Interesting, he was, okay. I, okay. I was like surprised, I saw that this morning. I was like, I know he's big, but I yeah. never assumed. But yeah, you see, we're-, we're, we're He's looking into my soul right but now. We're so, but we're so small-minded, like, like we're in the United States, yeah. we think we're like, you know, like world, like that world champions, like you know, in football. That no, we're just we're the only ones yeah, playing. Yeah, the rest it. of the world, yeah, could you not know? give a shit about American exactly. football. And then, and then, but I think that's we we've adopted that to a lot of other thinkings, mm -hmm. like celebrities and everything. Like, no way, man. Like he translates over like so many continents, and like like he's big on the whole planet. Mm. So maybe he's not the biggest star here. But he's like the third biggest star, but everywhere else. Right, right, right. And you put it all together, that yeah, makes him thousand like, percent. That makes him the yeah. biggest star. You know, we put out uh, when we put out our pilot episode of the podcast. And Are we gonna dub it? We have to dub, dub all it? these languages. Yeah, we do. We do eventually. We will. We we'll get there, buddy. We're a very small team. <laughs> We're very. Small I don't team. translate well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh God, the poor soul who has to translate your shit. Countries are gonna <laughs> declare war on us. Or at least me. Well, I, I will say this: we we seem to have a very international audience yes. because when we spoke about New York and tipping culture, there were a bunch of people who chimed in like, you know, the world's a lot bigger than New York. <laughs> but we don't see it. We don't. No, no, no. Well, honestly, I mean, you know, I had the benefit of living outside of the country for a long time. And, you know, my 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 mom introducing me to Korean music at a very young age and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I, I always had an idea that the world is a lot bigger than um, than America. But I yeah. Totally. You know, I live here. This is where I'm based. English is obviously my first language. And I just, New York's my Basically, world. Basically, like the rest of your life, you you live in what you experienced in high school and growing up and like, right. and, then, and then you get stuck and that's the music you like. Yeah. That's the art you like. That's like the type of women you like, mm -hmm. you know? Cars. Yeah. Well, speaking of an international audience, Bill Burr was oh, recently. I love I Bill love Burr. Bill Burr. He was recently in the UK and he had some things to say about food, about the food in the UK. Oh, it can't be anything good. <laughs> I, I know him. It can't be anything good. And he's had options to eat good food, yes. so it can't be good. Yes, yes, let's watch. Three days of eating in England, I now understand why Gordon Ramsay is so fucking mad all the time. <laughs> the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Dude, how bad were those fucking rice balls? Oh my God. They were soggy. Isn't that fucking <laughs> Mama Celeste pizza? <laughs> Dude, this is funny. We walk into this Italian restaurant, and I hear this woman mumble, it was good. I was go, I go, is it good? She's like, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. <laughs> then I was like, oh, fuck. I thought they were tourists. I don't understand how you can live this close to France and Italy and fuck up a fucking pizza and steak as much as they do. But I'll tell you, you know what I rest is? my case. This is what they, they focus all their shit on the pubs. Their pubs are unbelievable. Their sports are unbelievable. Sense of humor is unbelievable. It's a bit, it's a better food. business sense. Three Get them drunk, they won't care about the food. Hey, actually, very, very good point. You know, very fucking good point. What's your um, what's your feelings on these British celebrity chefs, Gordon Ramsay, Marco Pierre White? You know, yeah, you already lost me. Really? Just don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck. You don't give a fuck. Nope. I'm a big fan of uh, Marco Pierre White. I think he's cool, but funny. Well, you're enough, talking I about that. Show me a picture, like that. That I'm not talking through we my ass. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All He's you can do is show them. Wait, wait, it's up to them whether they want to teach themselves. As I've always said in my life, cooking is not a recipe. It's a philosophy. Unless it's pastry, and then it's chemistry. People oh. cook well. They're the ones who teach themselves because they question everything. A recipe is a guideline. That's what it is. Yeah, I mean, that's a, come that's on. a like Gordon Ramsay's like. Because he used to, Gordon Ramsay used to be with him, he used to right. work for him. Yeah. He yep. was like a, a sous chef yep. for him. But he's like, he's like, that's the one person that that's basically can redeem a whole country. <laughs> I mean, that's how good that guy yeah. is. Yeah. That's how good. And he's like, he's famous for like that young look. He had the long hair, yes. the cigarette. Yep. I think they've done t shirts and everything. Thousand right? Percent. That's the yeah. guy. He, he was kind of the first rock and rebel, roll, rock and roll yeah. motherfucker yeah. of a chef, unapologetic. You know, he would pick up the phone and speak in a French accent. You know, he's the owner and he would just talk shit with the customer trying to make a reservation and just tell them why in a French accent, why they can't get a reservation there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, oh, let's, let's, let's transfer the burden to another uh, heritage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> it wasn't the British are proper and prime. We never yeah. did this. Yeah. It must be the French dude who did yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't yeah. I can't tell you. Oh my god. When you know, like my dad was the quintessential French maitre d, mm-hmm. but he was a maitre d in his own restaurant. Mm-hmm. Like so, so people like people had no clue that he was the owner, right. but he dressed the part. He right. he was an employee in his own restaurant, yep. and he worked dressed the part and everything. But dude, so that gave him a little bit of confidence sometimes to like set people like set people like, straight. Like the thing, customer always right. Nah. Yeah. Nah. yeah. No, nah. no. 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 Oh. Customer is not always right. No. Let me make that very. We we are in the hospital hospitality industry. Yes, we do everything. Yes. To make our customers experience a pleasant one, but they are not always fucking right. <laughs> they are not always fucking right. You know? No, like, and, and then like his pet peeve was like the dumbing down of like going to a restaurant. Yeah. Like people like, like to when he in his eighties and he's like looking at people coming to the restaurant in like jeans, like that jeans are like gonna be expensive and I like gonna be well dressed. Like, yeah. Oh no, no. Like in sneakers. Oh, so God he must for- have fucking hated me. God forbid you come in with a t-shirt. But like, but then, it, but yeah, but now it's everywhere. Right, right. Like you go to these fancy places, right. like I'm like, I'll make the effort to put on a nice suit. And right. the person next to me is like in a fucking, granted, very expensive t-shirt, but it's a fucking t-shirt. Right. right. And jeans. Well, it's like, um, it's like uh, how airplanes were when they oh, were first, used, like you dressed, so nice. up, you dressed up in a suit yes. right, to go on an airplane. It was so nice. And now people t- sometimes don't even wear socks. Oh, we're going to get to that in a second, buddy. Don't you worry. Are you those know? knives? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, you know, so we, we were talking about um, famous chefs and Marco Pierre White, and, you know, he's the epitome of a badass chef. He's the OG, and he would he would have a comment to say about Britney Spears knife technique right here. Yeah, I just wanted to see what your comments I'm, were. I'm right. Those are fucking knives. Those are fucking knives. Let's watch this. Britney Spears and her knife. Just, I, I'm just like, every time she swings them around, I'm like, don't, please don't cut your fucking arms. Dude, like, as a father of three girls, yeah, this makes me upset. You know, it's like some someone, you know, what are the Chris Rock says? Like, hey, you have one job. Yeah. Keep her off the fucking stripper pole. Yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> if, if, if she's a stripper, you basically fail as yeah. a father. Oh, fuck. And a lot of strippers are going to be mad at you right now. Listen, that that's a Chris Rock Joke, but I'm using it to a point to get it. It's yes. like somebody here fucked up. Yeah. Like you don't, you don't. You, this doesn't happen to you from your own. Some someone fucked her up, right. and that's. And at the end of the day, the buck stops with like the father, like the parentage, and whoever was like supposed to, be, whoever promised to take care of her, and it didn't happen. Yeah. And and then the, oh, yes, but then they're gonna say, well, I think isn't. It, Mental instability, right? Yeah, well, she just uh, ended her conservatorship. And she's just going off the rails. I guess, apparently. She's fucking dancing on the internet with two kitchen knives. Man, why'd you have to be a Debbie Downer? This is supposed to be funny. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's see the knife skills. <laughs> no, fuck it. Let's just move on. Wait, this, this is, is me. Oh, yes, this is you. On this. I had a feeling you may make this a Debbie Downer, so I was prepared with a <laughs> clip. This clip, this clip makes me, I gotta tell you, buddy. This clip makes me happy every time I watch you do it. Okay. Because like er- everybody, this clip's gonna roll in a second. Paul's, we're looking at Paul's face from the side. Just wait until you see him turn his head. Like, how ha- I'm, just, am I happy? Just the joy on your face like lights up my day when I watch this video. Okay, so let's watch. Okay. Oh, motherfucker. I was put a little bit. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's happy, Paul. That's like. <laughs> That's unconsciously happy Frenchie. <laughs> don't, 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 don't choke. <coughs> oh, look at you. You're so happy. You're also thinner. <laughs> and I, I thought I was fat there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my how God. Fat but look I? at how happy you are. Like, yes, but look, we're going to see why <laughs> I'm so fat yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll the tape. Butter in your chicken. Oh. Two sticks of butter. 
Oh, let me tell you, that was so fucking good, though. Just a little, just a little. <laughs> just a little, just a little bit. Just a little bit. So you went to the supermarket and bought four chickens and you're like, for each chicken, I'm going to put two sticks of butter. Yes. And you purchased accordingly. Yes. <laughs> Look at you, you're so happy now. Yes, because that was a good day. That was a very successful. It's a simple, simple dish made excellent. Yes, absolutely. Couldn't and that's, agree more. And that's the, um, uh, what's the Irish butter in the green packet? The, I know exactly the brand name. Golden so, green. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, it's so good. If you guys remember the brand name, please let us know in the comments yeah. below for, for for those who don't know the brand so they can go out and purchase it because that because not all butters are created equal. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Definitely not. And then I had ch ch the chickens roasting on the on the on the wire, right? Mm -hmm. Rack. And I had all the potatoes underneath. So the butter uh, blends in with the chicken fat yeah. and yep. everything. And then they, and then that roast all the potatoes. Oh. It's like a two, it's, oh. Yes, listen, a French cuisine is built on butter. And I will say this, if you guys ever go to Le Ravage, 340 West 46th Street, make sure you get ask for the mashed potatoes. <laughs> and a side of butter. And it's <laughs> <laughs> Even the butter that we serve with the bread. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I, I tell, I keep telling the staff, don't bring out the bread and butter too early. Yeah. Like, I, I'm trying to get them, to, but they're not, they're being unsuccessful. Because they're not the the busters and the waiters are not coordinated. They're yeah. just on an automatic. Yeah. I was like, take the order first, yeah. and then bring out the the bread. Right. So yeah, they're hungry and everything, but just just wait. Yeah. Let them order their cocktails. Let them order their food, and then bring out the butter while you're waiting. From that point on, for your appetizer. Yeah. My daughter oh, eats a shit ton of bread and butter when she comes here, and yes. she likes she asks for it more and more. And that now, and now Tebow is like. Like he knows, he knows her re well enough. He has fucking bread and butter for Ready. her to take home. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no. It's I would do that. I would just do that bread and butter. Yeah. I like and maybe like some cheese and and a wine and I could do that all day long. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All day long. By the way, shout out to Tebow. Tebow is uh, is Paul's general manager yes. here at Le Ravage and great guy. Love that guy. Awesome dude. Uh, but let's keep watching. Let's keep. Let's. How much? Oh, I got my Warriors in Motion teach. That's one, another one of my charities. Well, well uh, yeah, shout them out. Uh, uh, oh, Crohn's oh, no. colitis. Okay. Uh, that's coming up. I have my uh, hearing, uh, my hearing charity for hearing impaired. Mm -hmm. um, I and that's Warriors. That's used to be uh, Wounded Warriors and Warriors in Motion is an affiliation that was sponsored by uh, Wounded Warriors. So a lot of like soldiers that would come back that like you know missing arms, legs, and everything, mm. and try to. I'm I'm big on the on the armed forces charities. I like to I, I I'd be down to join you in on join oh. in on some of those. You know, my grandfather's a, a, a veteran, a, a World War II oh, which Air side? Force Colonel. <laughs> <laughs> Pre oh, red okay. flag. I give, I give myself a head rush. Right, give me a moment. That was a good one. That yeah, was a good yeah. one. World War II, <laughs> pre the red flag going over the mainland. I, that's all. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, I don't need that heat on this channel yet. Oh my god! If we go into if we go into history, because I'm a big history yeah, buff. Yeah. And and my family is have it's a big. There's a big military background. Yeah. Like all the way back to Napoleon. Yeah. So we can we can that could be a, a whole. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want that heat though. Ooh. Man. I, I I get I oh fuck I'm, I'm, I'm all right let's move nope, on let's no, move no. on no, to let's move let's on no go. politics no politics in this podcast let's go move on to the butter on to the butter any final words final words before we all have a heart attack oh what yeah but most of this is gonna go onto the potatoes yeah most of this is gonna go onto the potatoes <laughs> that you're gonna eat <laughs> mix the chicken fat now oh god that's your fucking excuse oh. <laughs> all right man that. Uh, was pretty pretty awesome. Just I want, love um, that. I made myself happy. Yeah, yeah. So can you? You know that video made me happy. Yeah, it, it will it make trans anyone I see, happy. I see what people see now. Butter you guys know what to everything. Do. You guys know what to do now. If, uh, you have someone that's really down. Just send we, them. A clip we should make of, this a meme. We should. We should make that. <laughs> people make this a meme. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So buddy, we are we are filming this at the end of September going into October. Probably by the time this episode comes out will be late October. How is the restaurant? And you doing? your life will have changed. My life would have changed a lot. A I, lot. I have a baby due in 2 For weeks. For the better. For the better indeed. 
I'm sure I got a baby somewhere, Colin. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Lonnie would not be happy about that. <laughs> no, she's been bugging me about another baby. That's why. Uh-oh. That's why I brought it up. Uh-oh. She wants another baby. I'm another too one. old. You are old. Too old. You are old as fuck. My, my son makes fun of me that, like, I, I'm not patient enough that I'm making my own grandchildren. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a good one. I thought that was a good one. That's a good one. That's a I was like, good one. nice. Oh, nice my one. Oh, uh, well, now, well, I certain, you can certainly tell he's got in your wits. He is fucking hilarious. He's, and ja, and the little one too, Jack. They're all hilarious. But it is like, like obvious, like it's like, dun dun. But he is like dark humor. And like, you're like, wait, what did you just say? And they're like, it's like, they're bangers. Yeah. She's just more of a like, like she's like straight man, ne- be mean comedy. <laughs> she's just like, like fuck you comedy. No, my daughter's much like me. She's uh, she she likes fart jokes. She's like that type of comedy. Oh, I wait. Oh God. Oh uh, no. Please, oh, please no? don't. Okay. No, I don't. I don't. I don't need to be wafting in your essence. Ugh. But you were. Ugh. Oh, well. Everybody was on the plane. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I was letting loose on the plane. Oh God! I had, I had a friend tell me a story where he he said that he uh, ripped a fart like a pretty bad that was one. So bad, it was really bad. And then like you know, usually when you rip a fart in a plane, like people just kind of like mm, like move around. Apparently, the guy behind him just like out loud screamed like, "Come on!" <laughs> like, "Come on!" <laughs> but like you. You every once in a while you'll hear this on like 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 they have to turn planes around for like <laughs> oh yeah there like was a for plane bad that... farts or I don't know no, what no, no, or no, no. diarrhea they, or... they turned a plane around because someone had a like really bad diarrhea on the plane <laughs> like I think he like like he tried he, to walk go to the bathroom, bathroom and, and it just fucking <laughs> oh fuck oh can you imagine no I, I for me there's like pretty almost nothing worse than having someone else's poo on you. Like another human being's poo mm. on you. Well, like short of murder. Nah, you know, my own your your own kids is okay. Like you can deal yeah, with well, that. Yeah, your There's own something kid. weird, right? That yeah, happens. Yeah. It's like you, you don't mind it as much. No, no, not at all. I mean, it's still bad. It's <laughs> <laughs> but but you're like it's not the end of the world. Well, you know that this child is absolutely helpless and like oh, it, but you know. it makes you think though, like that whole thing shit in the bed with Johnny Depp. Don't what? you know his ex? Oh my wife, god! Shit yes, in the yes, bed? yes. Yeah, that like that's real, right? That like, was real. She, like she, his shit the bed. She shit the bed on purpose. On purpose, left him a present in the bed. What? Why would why would anyone? I mean, are crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah. You just completely alienated our female audience. Oh. Like 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 my yeah, but my, in re- in, uh, I, but in return, amazing sex. <laughs> the crazier the woman, the better the sex. I, that is all across my, the board. My channel is a split of like 90% male and 10% female. So I appreciate my female audience and you just like annihilated all of them. Yeah, but my good looks will bring them back. Oh. <laughs> what? No, no, I'm I not, agree. I'm, I'm agreeing. Not so, do I, am I not selling this I am, anymore? I, I am agreeing with you. I told okay, you. Okay, I'm losing weight. <laughs> Somebody get me Ozempic. <laughs> is that what it's called? That's like the new weight loss yeah, code, right? The that new Elon, weight loss. Elon Musk is taking yeah. or something. Ozempic. Ozempic. Come on, okay. hook me up. All right. <laughs> well, if anyone can afford it, you can. That's not the point. Oh. The rich get richer by by abusing the system. Indeed. How's the restaurant doing for you? Let's do some restaurant talk. What's what's been going on? Because uh, the really, po- yeah. Because I mean, listen, that's uh, that's a behind the scenes thing. A lot of our audience don't ever get to hear about and uh, i think i think it's and also i'm, I'm genuinely interested you know we're <clears throat> i'm at the point where the cost of things it doesn't matter how busy we are we could be packed seven days away morning noon and night the value like we're paying too much for stuff so yeah. that was like at best i'll break even yeah i feel like in this now in the slow months i'm losing money but and then like every year, like I know the routine, I'll catch up and yeah. like, but at the end of the at the end of the year, just it's I feel like the way things are costing, yeah, we're just gonna break even. Right. We're just breaking even. So yeah. I'm just basically open for my employees to have a, a right. living. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, my my restaurant is new. 
You know, we just celebrated one year this past April. And I'm just celebrating 40. Yeah, holy shit. <laughs> He's old. I'm not old. He is old. Not old. You said it yourself on this podcast, Drew. My sperm is good, though. <laughs> See, my sperm gets rejuvenated. Yes, you're creating your own grandchildren. <laughs> he says. Yeah, my restaurant is new and, you know, it's 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 not unusual for, you know, not to profit within your first year. Actually, it's very unusual. Usually, you're supposed to give yourself a restaurant. The rule of thumb was to pay off everything, your debt and everything, and to be clear and free was five years. Mm. Most people don't even have the patience or the ability to survive five years. Right. So, it's kind of like to get into the restaurant business means is weird. It's, it's got to be a whole different level yeah, to open yeah. up a restaurant yeah, yeah. or a hospitality business has to be something new. Yeah. You have to have a gimmick of some sort. 100%. So my shop, we saw a little bit of profit, uh, you know, this past um, February. Then we, we spoke about what happened in April, how, it's, you know, mm -hmm. typically business will tank around tax season in the mm -hmm. States here. Uh, then, uh, you know, I even made videos on my second channel, Chef Brian Sal Raw, talking about like, hey, we may go out of business. Like we're we're on the verge and may, we made a lot of changes. We started offering new products. The main thing was a smaller size sandwich so we can sell at a lower price point, but technically at a better margin. Because now we took a $20 sandwich, serve you half the portion, and we're charging you $12 now. So we make a better margin. We started implementing catering. So last month, we put, fuck you, man. What the fuck? <laughs> it's, it's always got to be about you. It's always got to be about you. Get to the point, Brian. I'm just, I'm getting there. You're not letting me get there. Now you're making me feel bad by falling asleep while I fucking talk. Asshole. Listen, so last month, near break even, which is yeah. amazing because all this stuff we've changed. You know, we're, we're going from... But I feel, I think prices are coming back though. What do you mean prices are coming because back? Because I was like, I took, yeah. I know I took off the fillets off the menu mm -hmm. because it was like $54 a, a pound. Jesus. Oof. I was like, impossible. Yeah. And this morning we were at 20. Oh, wow. 20. Yeah, yeah. So a huge drop. Yeah. It's still expensive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's normal. Like I can charge a, a reasonable price. All right. So... It's looking like this month we're going to show a profit at my shop, which, you know, a year and a half in, I think that's a yeah. good sign. But like in New York, like, we know that after the Jewish holidays, yeah. there's an upswing. Yes, 100%. And we're going to we're gonna hit it now. This yeah. weekend is like the first weekend. Yes. And we're going to have nice weather. Yes. Well, no, no. Tomorrow and Saturday is supposed to be shitty. Sunday what? is very nice. Yeah, I know. So... <laughs> Some people have actually, oh, you know, so our, our, I'm uh, so looking forward to a nice weekend. Our first, uh, our podcast pilot just came out this past weekend. And we talked about how from April into like July, it rained every fucking weekend. Right. Mm. And then it just so happened. It's been raining every weekend. Every fucking <laughs> recently. Weekend. Uh, so it's supposed, supposed to, last time I checked the weather it was supposed to rain Friday and Saturday. So we may be in for a lighter weekend. I know. Like expected. I haven't been able to go on the boat. I yeah. have to keep building the boat. Oh, pumping oh out poor the you. Oh no. Can't, can't go on my boat. <laughs> <laughs> I love being the heel, you know? Dude, I, that, well, listen, I love, I love it when you're the heel, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. 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 Actually, or us, you know, the battery drains out, you know, yeah. and if you don't turn on the boat or something. <laughs> oh, God forbid you got to charge your battery for your boat. <laughs> oh. Do you need jumper cables? Anyway, we're, yeah, unfortunately, it's looking like rain Friday, Saturday, which are the day. Sundays will Sunday supposed to be very nice. So prepare for Sunday. I just uh -huh. want to spend time with my baby. Yeah. Yeah. I try to take some. And I, I, I enjoy it more just being outside. 100%. Like, it gets depressing when you're locked in with the baby, like days upon days upon days. You know, you start not liking the baby. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh. an expression like, I was like, 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 it's not gonna be funny to anybody, but my father used to have this line. He was like, ah, take that with you, please. Like every time there was a mess or something, ah, take that with you, please. <laughs> and then me and my friend used to use that as like our tagline. It's like, oh, there was like, like a mess. Yeah. Uh, take that with you, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start using that. <laughs> it, was, it was, and like you, me and him, like right away, we knew, like we remember the moment yeah. we first heard him say it and everything. I remember we were having dinner and my father was annoyed that I was having dinner at the restaurant during a busy time slot. And and we How were- How old were you? Oh, no, no, this is like maybe 20 years ago. Okay. Like okay. 15 years ago. Yeah. 
So you were 40 but, then. <laughs> anyway, a friend brought, we had some VIPs, like some celebrities, and yeah. but then, but they wanted me to sit down and like that. And my father was like, no, it's like, it's the middle of service. You're the chef, you should be yeah. working, everything yeah. like that. But like, but in context, what I was doing was way more important. And, that was, and, and, and I, there was a wine storage, right? And he was purposely throughout the whole time trying to pretend like he couldn't get the, the bottles out and making a racket. And then he was like, oh, I'm sorry, am I bothering you? <laughs> <laughs> and that's constantly, and just would just walk away. And, and people were like, and I had said, yeah, yeah, that's my dad. <laughs> that's my dad. And speaking, like, of, speaking of celebrities, you just had Cindy Lauper here. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was... Um, By coincidence, right? Uh, well, we had, we had, we have, so we have live music. Yes. Uh, and I don't know how it happened. She's been here before, but a long time ago when she was like in her prime, mm -hmm. like she was young. She used to play at Madison Square Garden a lot. Mm -hmm. So we used to like, we were a short walk. So we used to get a lot of after show, like after concert celebrities used to come a lot to the restaurant because at that time, so it dies down, it's mm -hmm. not as busy. And they would be, it would be, and those usually those people, type of people eat out late anyway, mm -hmm. and go to bed late. So we, we were perfect for them. And she doesn't remember, I don't think she remembered I think Thibaut, like mm -hmm. in fact, like oh, like yes, we're, we're familiar with you. You've been here before, but you know, it's it's you're not going to recognize the context of mm -hmm. it because the restaurant has changed yeah. the look and the people are obviously different. But my dad was the staple. Like mm -hmm. like people knew they were there because they saw my dad. Mm -hmm. My father had like such an original face, right? Yeah. And like everybody knew him. Yeah. So it was like it was like oh oh I know where I am. He's such a cool guy. He was a staple of this place. He was a staple in New York City. Yeah, I mean, I've known you for like almost 12 years at this point. Right. Yeah, he is a staple of the city, thousand percent. Yeah. Um, but just a real memorable character. Like he, he, he never spoke to me, not once. Oh, if he didn't have to speak to people. Yeah. Which you would, which is weird for a maitre d', yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But it was a typical French maitre d'. Uh, you have reservations. <laughs> okay. Well, the thing is, your dad knew me by face immediately. So he, if I showed up. He knew I was meeting up with you. Yeah, so, so he had no effort to he, put in. He had no effort to put in. He just, <laughs> he was just like, <laughs> I would walk into the restaurant, he would go like this. He, he, and he would take me to wherever you were seated, to table one in specific. Um, but yeah, uh, cool guy, very cool guy. Um, Cooler than most, like one day, like, I don't know, I have to be in a good place where I, where I can get, but he has some, he had some, he had a, cool history yeah he was a cool we, we should we should i think we should dedicate an episode to him because he, he has he has a very rich history yeah in the new york restaurant scene yeah in hell's but kitchen he had a rich history yeah, before I, that yeah, I, <laughs> we'll get into it yeah let us know in the comments if you guys would like to know more about marcel uh, paul's dad very interesting we need to do an episode no what? i was gonna say we're gonna do an episode on my dad but i need to wait for him to first before I get into more detail about him. Yes, I can definitely <laughs> talk about things about my dad now right, exactly. that I couldn't talk about before. <laughs> yeah, my, my dad's still not there yet. Uh, yeah. he's, he's still, he's still, yes. you know. Like I would, I would rather not tell the story and have my dad, but now, hey, he kicked the bucket, you know? Yeah, yeah. But um, it makes for some good stories. Oh, I, a lot of good, I mean, you know some, but yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get to my dad eventually, but your dad, yeah, we'll, we definitely got extracurricular activities. Uh, one of those. No comment. No comment. No comment. Let's just say it involves Chinatown, <laughs> old New York. <laughs> Chinatown, old New York. You know, like <laughs> nobody. No, I'm gonna make a, a movie reference, Year of the Dragon, but nobody's gonna fucking understand when I. Oh fuck it. Oh, uh, I hate being old. Uh, for all you old timers out there, go watch oh, Year of the Dragon. Real quick, I just want to go back to the state of our restaurants and stuff because you were you, you were starting to get into an interesting topic. You were saying filet at one point was fucking fifty four dollars, yeah, fifty four, and now you said it's at twenty something, which yeah. is still expensive. It's still expensive. So I remember at one point lettuce got to seventy five dollars <clears throat> a case, yes. iceberg lettuce, which Sem is the cheapest thing you can yes, buy. Yes, it's water. Yeah. So one case is twenty four heads. But they sell it to you by the piece in a case, not by the weight. So all of us at Restaurant Depot were fucking shaking cases of lettuce because we're about to buy a $75 case of lettuce. Right. We better get the heaviest shit. Nothing should be shaken. Yeah. It should be yeah. solid. It should be solid, you know? And <laughs> fortunately it was. And the but. problem is with like the, you could, you could tell like the purveyors were skimming, yep. you know, like everything, was less yeah. 
like a case of plum tomatoes will like fill a third of the way instead of right. full. Right. And it's the same price. So if they weren't jacking up the prices, you were getting less product. Yes. And, and they were pretending like it wasn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, you said a key thing because whenever, I feel whenever someone says not, this is, isn't limited to restaurants. I think whenever, whenever someone says they're a business owner, everyone just assumes they're fucking loaded. Yeah. Um, but you said something very key that I want to bring forward, which is you're pretty, as of right now, where you stand, or at least that's the impression I'm getting, you are, your restaurant is basically open to pay your employees. Yeah. Because you're cutting it. even. Yeah. I'm like, I make no money. I don't yeah. even take a salary, but I'm just, as long as everything gets paid, all the bills get paid and the all employees, all the employees get paid. I'm happy. Yeah. I mean, you are in a much better position than yes. a lot of other business owners. But it took there. fucking five decades to get there. Right. Right. And I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that to take anything away from you. You know, you've worked fucking hard. I've known you for a long time now. You've always been one of the hardest working guys I know, but, um, just not lately. <laughs> I get a little shy. I, 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 I don't, I, I hate all the shit I'm getting the flack for. I'm getting all my friends. Like, Oh, Paul, you my own life. It's like, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. Because when you were 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and fucking around and yeah. like, Oh, let me see what I want to do. And like, Oh, let me waste uh, my parents four years of college money to co end up being a cook anyway. <laughs> like I was grand. I was pounding. I yeah. was like, I was like a professional in the kitchen, like legitimately, I can say at 13 years old. Mind you, I was in a kitchen way before that, right. doing some type of slave labor. Yeah. But I was cooking, yeah. technically cooking at the age of 13. Yeah. So I knew that's what I was doing. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I didn't know I was, that's what I was doing. I just, because I wasn't told I had a choice. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, you know. But what I'm getting at is people just assume you're a business owner, you're bringing in the money. And, yeah. You know, there are a lot of the mayor benefits. thinks that the mayor thinks like yeah. he literally said out loud oh let's tax the restaurants let's go let's let's oh, find the fuck, restaurants yeah. because they have money yeah yeah like he legitimately said this yeah. i'm like and what the fuck yeah it's uh i i i don't i don't know if that's factual or not just putting it out there but i I, I i do agree our mayor is a fucking moron scumbag but yeah but uh you know there are a lot of benefits being a business owner, 100%. Mm. Um, it is great being your own boss. Always. But you are, you are, you are a slave to your business. Yeah. Like the business comes first. You know, if something goes wrong, it doesn't matter if you're at a the kid's birthday party. Yeah. Stops. Yeah. Here. Yeah. And and that's why on my second channel, I put out a video saying I ruined my finances because you know what. I didn't do it right. And I had to get a consultant in to help me fix it and get Listen, it back all, in line. All my, all my problems stem from me. Yeah. I, that's 100%. the thing also, if you're like all by yourself, like all the success is yours, but all the failure yes. is yeah, yeah, yours right? too. hundred percent of the reward, uh, right? You're like, but hundred percent of the failure is all yours as well. But then again, depending on how many times you get married and how many kids you have, <laughs> all the reward is not all yours. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow they get to keep the reward and you're like, oh, I guess I got to start all over again. Well, no. That's a touchy well, subject. Unfortunately, I haven't. Fortunately, I haven't gone it's there yet. It's cheaper to keep her. <laughs> God, just, you're just, you're just shooting down all of our female audience. <laughs> like just, can you please fucking stop? Oh, okay. Actually, don't stop. If, if you can dig up some nudie pictures from a long time ago, Oh, jeez. <laughs> Coincidentally, that guy right. who came in, mm -hmm. um, Paul had a couple friends come in to check out the studio. You know, I mean, it's pretty much done. I'm just missing oh, one no, element. It's sick. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, so the next phase, so if you guys want to know, the next phase is to start to have additional guests. Right. So we're going to set up, like, let's look at the wide cam. So down there by the three monkeys, which, by the way, can you tell- More people for me to peek on. <laughs> can you tell the audience about the monkeys over there? Monkey see, monkey do. Hear no evil, say no evil. Speak no evil, right? Something like that. It's one of those. Yeah. They're monkeys. I like monkeys. Yes. Look, I got monkey. I got a monkey here. <laughs> My daughter loved monkeys, and, and she kind of drew this one. I, I bettered the drawing, but mm -hmm. she kind of like, she kind of drew this. Oh, that's cute. It's, that's it was it was pretty original. She managed to make the tail like a whole. Well, so that's why I'm trying to get more cameras here. Is I'm trying to bring you more monkeys, so we can have guests on. I love. I always wanted a pet monkey. <laughs> I don't know. My dad fucking hates monkeys. He tell he tells me the story about how he got bit by a monkey in Taiwan. I could believe that because yeah. they're like all over the place. They're yeah, loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a tropical, you know, yeah, hot area. Uh, Did you but, see that place where the monkeys were? Uh, 
a dog killed them, attacked a uh, monkey, and then the uh, all well, like the gang of monkeys. They all ganged up and tore them apart. And no, they grabbed them. They would grab the dogs and pull them up into the in out over on top of the building and, and drop them. <gasps> Monkeys, man. Don't yeah, fuck with yeah, the monkeys, don't man. Don't fuck, with, don't fuck with monkeys. Anyway, we're we're looking to get another dual camera set up here so we can have guests in the future. Expand How the podcast. How cool is that going to look? It's going to look great. It's going to look awesome. I'm super excited. Um, there's some logistical stuff we got to figure out, you know, all the angles. We but, got some nice lighting. Yeah, yeah, we got the background lights up. We're just missing one set of LEDs back there, but it's 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 coming on Amazon I, real soon. I, as long as I look good, that's what's You look more. great. You look fantastic, you buddy. We're gonna get our female viewership back up now. <laughs> cost of goods, cost of goods. One of the things that makes a restaurant business very hard and prohibitive, not aside, especially in a big town like New York City, aside from all the red tape, politics, and it's time or money. Yeah. If you put in the effort to shop around, right. by mind you, it t that takes effort and time yeah. too. Yeah. If you want to be lazy, which I send up too, like I just one stop shopping, I'll yeah. get everything and. Fuck it, I win here and I will lose there. But like a good chef should be care mindful of the food cost yes. and constantly on top of it. But that in itself is a fucking time consuming yeah. job. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm at the phase of my career where like uh, that's that's where I'm spending a majority of my time is, is where am I getting what ingredients? Mm -hmm. And it's it's a pain in the fucking ass. You and know? sometimes you like you are like okay you could get it cheaper somewhere else but they're not reliable the quality yes less, oh my god or, yes or they're not on they don't yes. deliver on time or right. they don't deliver right, right. that day right. Right, it's right, always right. something yes, it's always you always got to choose like yeah. the eve it's yeah. you're choosing the lesser of an evil i have a perfect example for you avocados right so Ooh. restaurant oh, rich people food huh <laughs> oh you splurging well i am now because i would get re avocados from restaurant depot always the cheapest always the fucking cheapest Right, it's like uh, last time I bought it from there, it was like. Didn't we do a piece where the cartel was getting into the avocado business? Oh, I think we because touched. A, no, no, we didn't do it on a, on the podcast. We did it like we touched upon it. We in talked it, about in it. Pro Chef React, dude. How bad does thing do things need to get inexpensive that it's they make more money selling avocados <laughs> than fucking drugs? <laughs> Come on now. So I had to stop getting my avocados from Restaurant Depot because. They are the cheapest always. But the problem is it would be this ripe one time. It would be not ripe at all another time. Uh, it, you know, it would not be there at another time. It was just so fucking unreliable. So I started ordering directly from a guy that exclusively sells avocados Avocado. and he gives it to you at the ripeness that you want. But do you have to, is there a minimum order? Because now you're stuck with a minimum order. Uh, half a case, which is fucking beautiful. Half he's, a case? Yeah. He's uh, gonna he's gonna spend the gas to deliver a half a case of yeah, avocados. Yes, yeah. awesome. I don't. I I'm ninety nine percent sure he's got to be delivering uh, if next he, to you. Yeah, yeah. Or but, next to me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, hundred percent. You got to give me that number. Yeah, fuck yeah. He's great. All he does shout is out, is listen. Shout out, one hundred percent, Miguel. Shout out to you, G to P. Amazing company. You are paying premium, no doubt. But the thing is, I know when I get the avocado, it is at the same ripeness every single fucking so he's time. he's passing on the expense of him sorting them out and categorizing them yes and giving you what you yes. need yes and the thing is his prices do fluctuate but he lets you know number one when it does and he charges you the same for a half case as a full case so very reasonable half a case when you when they have to unbox something it's always yeah you know you, you'll see like all these stores like uh restocking fees it's, yeah. the, it's a, ver a version of a restocking yeah. fee it's a fucking scam yeah, in it's itself. A fucking scam. But uh, I started paying the premium for it because, you know, I would, I would. Americans love avocados. They huh? love avocados. It's I, like a treat, yeah. right? Well, no, it's not even a treat anymore. It's a staple now. But it's like, it's like an affordable caviar. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it luxury. That, it's luxury. Right, right. Caviar. Okay. Uh, it, are, what are we talking about? Avocados yeah, are uh, luxury. Our so luxury fucking item. ADD. Oh, what are we talking about? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I got it back. I got it. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, got it. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm paying a premium for my avocados now, but at the very least, at least it's consistent, and and that's it, and that's what it is, and that's the battle you have to fight sometimes. I was trying really hard to make sure I got the cheapest avocados possible, but like if I if I need avocados every Friday, ripe every Friday to go into the weekend, and I and I need to buy it on a Tuesday. But Wednesday, Thursday 
is super slow and I don't use any of my previous avocados and that shit goes bad. It's just, there are too many fucking variables at that point. So sometimes it's better to pay the premium. Speaking of AD, ADD, mm. what are we talking about next? <laughs> what? Well, you know, I have a video we can react to. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. Do you, you know what my favorite part is? Do you, do we have uh, questions from, uh, from? Yes, we do. We have we new do? questions. Okay. Do you want to do questions first? Uh, that's my favorite part. Actually. That's your favorite part? Okay. Yeah. So what do you, you want to react or you want to No, show questions? me. You, okay. you went right. through the effort. So okay, let's okay, go. okay. All right. So let's see what you got. This there. is the channel August the Duck. Shout out to August the Duck. We've actually exchanged some DMs on Instagram. August the Duck. Yes. So uh, in my analytics, I'm able to see what my viewers also watch and his channel is one of them. A lot of my viewers also watch August the Duck and vice versa. So I figure. Is it a play on Howard the Duck? Uh, I have no idea. I doubt it. Okay. Yeah, you're too fucking old. No one who know, knows who August the Duck is. This, I, I this mean, old shit duck. is going to get old real soon. <laughs> I'm letting you know now. You know what doesn't get old? Your hate for peas. Oh, God. Oh. I, Man, you guys got to see these. Oh, my videos sister got me good today, too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Let's watch. Ugh. Prime toilet strip. Prepare fresh dough on hard, clean surface. Clean surface. Guys, I've got a question. When I say the words toilet steak, what exactly comes to mind? Now, I would hope the answer is nothing because you have never thought of okay, nor okay. have you- For a second, I thought he was the guy in, in that short there, but it's not him. He's commenting no, no, on that. Yes. So, <laughs> so yet again, we are reacting. To someone else to reacting. Else yeah, it's our shtick. It's our shtick. Let's keep going. Okay. Of such a concept. Well, we need to get a t-shirt. Carpet baggers. Now we cover a lot of TikTok <laughs> cooking. On Fuck you! I almost <laughs> ruined my laptop. <laughs> on this channel and it seems like every time we think we found the worst of the worst somebody new comes along and does something that i was not aware the human brain <gasps> was even capable of conceiving such as cooking exclusively in hotel bathrooms which dude was using a, a toilet, toilet tank as the sous vide <laughs> i gotta tell you that's pretty smart you know if you're a trucker right and okay. you want to you don't want to eat yeah, gas but station food every day but you also don't want to lug around a bunch of cooking equipment. But 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 that you see that would by the way tangent. But that's the original source for the Michelin guide. It was a guide Michelin. Uh, uh, by by the way, everybody, not the toilet. That's not what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep going. It's the but the Michelin guide was like for truckers and like yeah. where the tr where to stop to eat. Mm -hmm. Okay, move on. Okay. Sorry. TikToker Barfly seventy seven seventy seven. This guy cooks everything from steaks to pizzas, all using nothing but hotel bathroom items and you know like the occasional power drill. But we're gonna let that one slide. Now you might what have an idea in your mind fuck? of what this would look like, but I promise you, it's so much worse than anything you're imagining. And it gets even worse when you realize that this does not seem to be a joke. This actually seems to be the way this guy lives and cooks all of his food, which I would have to imagine is uh, not not. Oh my god, this is a fucking rabbit hole, <laughs> dude! I, you shouldn't have shown me this. Uh, you shouldn't you because. <laughs> watch, watch, watch. He's using a power tool. Yeah. That is fucking yeah. genius. Yeah, do you see what I mean? It is genius, right? Look, look, look. But look, look, watch this. For the body you will see what i mean shortly okay a power tool to spin the mix so he didn't bring the mixer he just bought the mixer attachment to grind right, right? uses a power tool that's fucking smart that is right? smart because every trucker is gonna have a power tool on there yeah right but look at how he pushes the protein through late let's begin <laughs> the toothbrush <laughs> that's a little extra you don't have to do that no please subscribe prime toilet strip the attachment comes with the plunger yeah Listen, okay, the, the bag protects the food, technically, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's obviously food grade plastic. Right? Yeah, even though it's gonna still get into you. I still a toilet. Yeah, it's still, still a toilet. toilet. Still a to but it's not the toilet bowl. It's a yeah, it's the water tank. Yeah, it's the water tank. Yeah. You know, and the water tank's getting the fresh water. I, I wouldn't do it. Like I, I won't cook dinner for my daughter that way, but you know, I may cook dinner that way for someone I really fucking hate, but <laughs> already seeing multiple things that I'm sure actually have the chance to kill you. So this guy is boiling a strip steak in toilet water using an immersion heater and is boiling some potatoes in a metal bucket. Uh, yeah, I feel like this would not pass a food safety test. 
I mean, the galvanized bucket, I wouldn't really recommend cooking in a galvanized no. bucket. No, no, that's that's not safe that's, at all. That's seeping into your food. Yeah, 100%. And pizza box. As a cutting board? As a cutting board, you know. Butter. Oh, yeah. Um, Creamers that he's he's that he's probably so this is like I guess part of it like the resources right and the equipment and like then he's the re, like he's it's like how it's basically how to save money yeah, right yeah and all those creamers he's get stealing those right <laughs> they're free right 100%. and then the butters he's stealing the, the butters are free right, right. if you go to right. you can grab all of them yeah. technically and then save them and the creamers you can yeah. get some and then and he's some. able to afford the shrimp and he's afford yeah. yeah all right do you know that there's no such thing as fresh shrimp in the United States? Yeah. It's, everything's frozen? Everything's frozen. Well, most seafood in the States, actually in the world, so, is frozen. So do not, you're better off, <laughs> quality wise, you're better off buying a frozen seafood product than fresh, like fresh, when you see fresh shrimp, I think, no, they defrosted that box and put it there yeah, for you. Yeah. Can you. But can you explain why majority of seafood is frozen? Well, just to get it here and, yeah. to, and like seafood is, perishable so quickly so yeah you have no choice but yeah. the f fresh frozen is the ideal flash frozen flash frozen flash frozen flash frozen. yeah so basically they are essentially uh super freezers they get well below zero degrees you could freeze a body and yeah. i mean uh, some <laughs> proteins and under so, so what happens is when you freeze something very fast and quickly you have less of a chance of damaging the proteins. Right. Because when ice freezes slowly, it 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 forms into like sharp ice crystals. Whereas if it's if water content, I said ice freezes. When water freezes quickly, uh slowly, it forms into these sharp fuck you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> When water freezes slowly, it forms into these sharp peaks. But when you freeze water quickly, it doesn't have the chance to form those peaks. Thus, it won't puncture the cell walls of a vegetable and or the fiber of a protein. That is why when you put something into your home freezer. Fast, good, slow, no good. There you go. All right, fine. All right, we'll go with that. So wow, he's gonna okay. so the next reverse here, right? Your hotel yeah, he's gonna reverse here. That looks like a bloody murder. <laughs> your ice bucket might have been used to make mashed potatoes and uh, fried shrimp, I guess, and that your bathroom sink might have meat blood in it from toilet water steak. I know, I know, things that most people would know to look out for, anyways. But just thought I would give you guys a heads up. Dude, the cross contamination in the yeah, hotel it, it, room, it, though. Yeah. Oof. That's pretty. Rough. You could get really sick. Ooh, charcoal seasoning. <laughs> Hey, listen, I hate to admit this, but I love charcoal. It's like, it'll give you cancer. <laughs> yeah. It's instant cancer. They yeah. like, it's illegal. You cannot find charcoal seasoning. If you can, it's like a modified one. But in the old days, you used to get real charcoal. What's the, uh, the famous seasoning brand? Like the, with the red stripe and whatever. But I mean, it was legit. They like, it gives you cancer. And I remember. I remember my stepdad when he found out that they were taking off the shelf, went to supermarkets to buy as much as he could so he could bank them and have them. <laughs> Even though they said it was going to cause cancer. Oh my God. Oh my God. Whoa. Directly on. Well, you're going to get grill marks. Wait, what, is, what that? is that? Is that cheese? Oh my God. What the? Yeah, okay, so sick. Wow. That look good. Yeah. The end result look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for. But is, that, but is that sear, the charcoal seasoning, or is that a real sear? I think it's, you know, it's got burnt marks from the heated coil, uh, and the majority of that color is coming Can from the seasoning. Can you imagine what that hotel room smells like? The next day, somebody has to come and clean that, <laughs> and they're like, what the fuck happened in this room? <laughs> like, and if you didn't clean that blood yeah. from everywhere, if it's spilled there, the there is a or something, massive amount of cross contamination in there, thousand percent, thousand percent. But his immune system is off the <laughs> charts, dude. Yeah. He, he, he. His immune system is off the charts. I'm in this scenario, I must say. I don't really know who's winning here. I don't I don't think anybody's winning here. Definitely not the hotel staff. They're definitely losing. That towel is a loss. That's gonna be a tax write-off. That ice bucket needs to be thrown into a biohazard container. I mean, I don't even know how you feel comfortable doing this. Sure, if you want to put this stuff in your body, go for it. But just the blatant disrespect for everybody around you. But oh my god, can you imagine what this hotel room smells like? This guy ah! has neighbors. 
hate to admit, it, but I like spam. Uh, I hate to admit it. I love spam. I love spam. What, what? Bullet paper roll into what? What did he? He, he hollowed it out with the toilet paper roll. What, the spam? Yeah. <laughs> He's stuffing That's it with... spam. Yeah. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see that. Okay. What do, you, what do you mean you didn't see that? You saw him with the can I saw of the spam. can, but then I didn't recognize uh -oh. that, that loaf. That's a teriyaki flavor spam. Okay. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. How many flavors of spam are there? You don't know about flavored spam. No, there's spam. No, there are tons, especially in Asia, they have all types of flavors of Spam. Jalapeno, cheese, chili, fucking wasabi, fucking everything, dude. You know, I, you know what I love is the ones that use it for the, make the crispy rice or the sushi? Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Spam Usubi. Oh, yeah. Do you know how, how Spam became famous? How? Because it was a military item. Oh, yes, And yeah, there was yeah. a surplus in Hawaii. Yeah. And that's how it. Yeah. Well, uh, anywhere that had a U.S. GI presence. Yep. You know, Philippines. Oh, I love that you're confirming my knowledge. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the I'm dropping knowledge, and you're confirming my knowledge. Good for you the, there. The Philippines. Good for you. The Phil. The, Korea. They all. Yes, fucking, those are all, yeah. all Asian countries. Yeah. Yes, I get it. Yeah. I'm French. I'm not stupid. <laughs> I know there's probably like a 1 in 1 million chance that I would ever run into a hotel room that this guy had stayed in, but I don't know if I'll ever be able to but use the trash, a hotel that, ice is that the trash bin? Again. Yeah. Can you just imagine what people throw in a trash yeah, bin in, in a, a hotel, hotel room? Yeah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> but there was an insert in the trash bin. Uh. <laughs> He's using... Uh. <laughs> also, there's absolutely no way this is going to cook correctly. This is not going to end well. Oh my God, he's, oh my God. Listen, his his procedure's good. He dried yeah. it off, yeah. the flour, <laughs> listen, he's on point. Like he's definitely had some professional skills that he's like. like he, he must've worked as a line yeah. cook at some point. Oh my wow. god, he might as well have not even cooked it. That meat is purple. I feel like we're already playing with enough fire here, cooking everything you eat in a hotel bathroom with things not meant to be cooked in. Raw meat is the last thing you should add to your diet, man. Toilet take legs. Toilet cake. Oh my god. Just want to give a quick formal apology in regards to how many times you guys are going to have to hear this song during the course of this video. He, uh, he oh, really just uses the same. Song. Yeah. At this point, doesn't realize that he just, it's like automatic. Steam. We're steaming chicken. That's the ice bucket. Ice bucket. He's making a batter. Dude, who's gonna think to clean that ice bucket to the extent <laughs> that they need to, to be able to use it for an ice bucket again? Oh my God. overcooking. That's what we're worried about here. He's uh, shocking with ice. So when you want to stop the cooking process, you want to dunk the food into an ice bath and he's doing it in a fucking hotel sink, bathroom sink. I mean, the amount of fucking loogies that was coughed into that. Oh, ugh. That, okay, you, I was gonna say, how many people are too lazy and they just piss in the fucking oh, uh, uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> A circus going on in this bathroom. Dude. Oh. Oh, Every God. surface in this bathroom has either been touched by raw chicken or raw egg. There's literally raw egg in the sink as you create an ice bath for your cooked chicken. I don't think Why is he concerned about your the safety be, of, of... I was like, I, I'm worried for this dude, man. Oh, what? He's gonna fry... He's, oh. What is going on here? What kind of... What? What the fuck is that? <laughs> Is that gravy? Yes, it is. I'm pretty torn up about what is actually the worst part of this video. Is it him cooking this chicken in a bathroom or is it him making vanilla gravy? I'm kind of leaning towards the vanilla gravy, not gonna lie. What, wait, what the fuck is the vanilla gravy? I, what did I miss? He, of like a he, vanilla sauce? He must have mixed some vanilla shit with gravy. Hang on, hang on, hang on. 
There. No, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Car wait, oh, 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 is that wait. carnation? Wait, wait. Freeze. Rich Co and creamy Betty frosting Crocker. vanilla. Oh my God, Betty Crocker, rich and creamy frosting vanilla with chicken gravy. No, 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 no. Oh my God. That hurts my brain. Decadent vanilla frosting gravy glaze. I mean, he's proud of this. Dude. dude. Oh my God. No way. Oh, he put it on the mashed potatoes. The best part were the mashed potatoes. <laughs> and he ruined it. I'm pretty torn up about what is actually the worst part of this video. Is it him cooking this chicken in a bathroom or is it him making vanilla Dude, gravy? But all kidding I'm aside, I know we joked the... about it, but his immune system must be off the yeah, wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he must be like... Like they should have taken this dude's blood to find the cure yeah. for cancer, for COVID. COVID, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's start with COVID. Gravy, not gonna lie. <laughs> all right, what's next? Coco, is that cocoa powder? Fresh dough. A clean surface? Really, man, that's what we're saying here? I've seen what you've done to this surface. Unless you dropped a nuclear bomb onto this countertop, there is no way it's actually clean. I don't want to hear that. Wait. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. He's going too fast. He's, like he's the. All right. He took one of those cheese and jerky packets. Okay. He made a dough, and it looks like he's gonna stuff the dough. Okay. What's the second? Thing? I have no idea. Looks like a sausage. Ugh. Ugh. Beans. <laughs> Pepperoni. Oh, no, no. Holy no. shit. Why is what it? The what the? Wait, wait, what? Banana now? Is that Cool Whip? What the, the fuck? Oh my god, he took the, 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 the heating coil, turned it upside down, and hung it on the luggage, the thing you put your luggage on. <laughs> so is it cooking from the top or yeah, from the bottom? Yeah, yeah, Set your convection oven to 375 degrees. Wait, he created a a, a bathroom it, convection oven? Yeah. So the, so, the so, bottom, there must, so the bottom is cooking too? I don't know, maybe the bottom's a fan? Or the oh, bottom? The bottom's a fan. That's why it's this spinning. This video is about where I started to get over the disgustingness of this TikTok channel and started to really appreciate the ingenuity. This man has essentially set up a DIY rotisserie in his hotel bathroom for cooking a four course pizza ring. What is that? I don't know because I don't possess the level of genius that so this man clearly So you eat through the does. whole <laughs> Dude. He's grinding the hot dogs. Can you imagine you're working as a cleaner in a hotel and this guy forgets to put the <laughs> do not disturb sign on his doorknob and you see a man in his bathroom with a drill hooked up to a meat grinding accessory pushing down hot dogs into said meat grinding accessory with a toothbrush hanging out of his mouth onto some pizza dough onto the bathroom Dude, counter. The, the hot dog company went through so much trouble yeah. of reconstituting yeah. that yeah, ground yeah, meat. Yeah, yeah. Why are you I grinding it up again? Oh. Oh, uh, that's just not Holy right. shit. Oh my god. That's an overloaded pizza. Look at this thing. Fuck, I'm drooling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not drooling. I, I I'm drooling because my mouth has been open this entire time in complete shock. I'm Holy sure that just being in the general vicinity of this monstrosity, just smelling it, much less eating it, would send you to the bathroom for eight hours minimum. You better clear off the next three days of your calendar. Well, he's already in the bathroom. War. Well, guys, this is one of those few cases where I really have far to go. this might not ever be topped. Sure, we might Dude. see more disgusting recipes. Oh, okay, yeah, that, that's pretty much that it. Was on Holy another, cow. That was on another wow, level. Wow, that was another level, yeah. That makes... Renews my confidence in K and... <laughs> and what's the other Jack. one that we Jack? Yeah. Dude, this is I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna this is gonna taste better, but it's fucking hazardous. Yes, yeah, yeah. 100%. That is hazardous. But like you said, he ha probably has an amazing immune system. It's got an ama yeah. You know, at the end of the day, he's getting two things out of it. 
good health and entertainment and, and views enter- and views <laughs> uh, yeah, many things out of it actually we are nearing the end of today's episode but before we go we're going to go on to frenchie's favorite part yes. and we're going to do viewer questions i love all right questions. so we're going to prioritize our patrons first thank you Doki all Smoking. right <laughs> you're so excited i am uh let's see uh fred b i would like for you to show us how to make a good sub and do you make coleslaw and potato salad and how and how we can do that at home. So number one, my shop does not sell coleslaw or potato salad. I can make a banging uh, coleslaw and potato salad, but uh, we're focused more on the don't subs. You, don't your people call it kimchi? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I had to, he went with it. All right. A little, uh, little racist there on my part, but still, yeah, well, he went yeah, with it. Yeah, went with it. Um, the, the sandwich though, like, mm-hmm. um, didn't we we did that with Google. We did the chop uh, salad sandwich. Yeah, yeah, the chop could salad. Could that be considered that, like I, a slaw? Yeah, that could be kind of a slaw. I don't know if that episode's out yet, though. By the time this comes out, oh, so it's okay. So never so, mind. So, yeah, we'll just beep. move on. Uh, you got a little sneak peek. Okay, pre Tom Sarma. Uh, if one use if one uses spices and seasonings as per feeling, how does one standardize their dish for consistent flavor? Oh, that's. You want you want to tackle this one? Then just use the same amount every time. No, well, if one uses spices and seasonings as per feeling, how does one standardize the dish? Listen, you every spice has That's to be treated. That's why they say salt and pepper to taste. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, but salt and pepper is one thing, but seasonings like smoked paprika acts is very different yeah, but from like you talk about anything and, spicy that's yeah. to taste i'm yeah, sorry yeah, yeah that's to taste uh, well all right something like cumin powder i think a little bit goes a long way mm-hmm. right chipotle powder super you know has a lot of aroma a little bit goes a long way every you have to treat every seasoning differently and then at the end of the day you have to know your threshold and the only way you're going to know your seems threshold like a, is an by, experimental process yeah it's an experiment you're gonna have uh, to you're gonna have to yeah figure it out exactly like you have to work with it more and find out what your personal threshold is uh, mike lee working in new york city have there been any trendy dishes you were happy to see fizzle out all of them <laughs> <laughs> all of them <laughs> Give an example. Well, I'm happy. I'm, I hope that we partook in the fraud that is the those gold covered steaks. Oh my and God! I was gonna say the same exact thing. Thank so, yes, yes, right? Yeah, yeah. And then because that restaurant's closed, right? They're in New York. Oh yeah. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit. He's a billionaire. He, yeah. he could kill us. Um, yeah. There's like putting on the truffle on everything, like literally everything. Mm-hmm. Like doesn't like that's been overplayed, right? Yeah, yeah. 100%. And it's just it's just a way to hike up a dish. Yeah. Like usually take it. It's a way of jacking up the price on a, on a cheap dish. Right. And selling it for yeah. a bigger. That price. and caviar. Caviar. They're putting yeah. caviar on everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. But like uh, like a recipe or an actual dish, I'm just happy that's gone away. You know what I hate is those cotton candy things. Those where they melt the cotton candy like. The fuck is that? Uh, wait, Ever see the raccoon who gets disappointed because it just gets all melted? Wait, wait, what? You never saw this raccoon no. who steals a cotton candy and he goes to wash his hands and all the cotton candy disappeared and he's like, the fuck? No, I haven't seen this. What, the hell you what are about? you watching on YouTube? Fucking August the Duck. No. Oh. <laughs> Luminita Elena might be a dumb question, but I'll try my luck no anyway. No dumb questions. Only dumb people. What does cilantro taste like? Soap oh. dish. Dish soap. <laughs> Do you like cilantro? Cilantro? I love cilantro. I love cilantro. But 50% of the people's genetics makes it taste like Well, I think it tastes like soap. soap, but I think it's delicious. Yeah. I like it. And is parsley a good substitute? No, they're very different. Uh, there are so many recipes that call for this ingredient, and everyone I know, including me, have the cilantro taste like soap gene, so I have no frame of reference of what a good substitute would be. Have you ever tried like toning down this? the cilantro a little bit like because cilantro to me especially aroma wise is soapy but i like it it's it's not like a bad thing if you don't like it just just go with a different flavor you're shooting for another flavor so omit it completely all right you know chive scallions uh what else do well chives is like a little oniony slash garlicky right scallions is oniony for sure parsley is very grassy cilantro is just very italian parsley italian a little less yeah, definitely less than curly parsley. Right? That's for sure. But there's there's no to me there's no substitute for cilantro. There is no substitute. That's yeah. why it's Yeah. It's like, like 
time. There's no substitute for time. Yeah. There's no substitute for rosemary. It's, yeah. it's on that category of herbs. Yes. Smink Sangsura, please tell us about how your bromance started, what has kept it going this time for each of you, what has been the peak of your culinary life, what do you have on your bucket list? Well, we Let already- Let me answer that for you. Okay. The peak of your culinary life was the day you met me. <laughs> Fuck you. And how did we meet is, um, um, you were a big fan and you were chasing me all oh, around. Oh God. <laughs> and what's the other part of the question? Uh, what has kept it going all this time? What's on your bucket list? Yeah. Uh, we just love each other, bro. Yeah, we do, we do. It's a bromance. It's, it is a bromance. And the bucket sure. list? Oh baby, we're just getting started. <laughs> We are just getting started. The making of the bucket list is a bucket list. Yeah, baby. Oh, yes. You know, I couldn't have answered it any better. Will we see Frenchie make a French omelet? Oh, yeah. That's that's the, the pinnacle test of an interview yeah. when hiring somebody. I'm so, so yeah, yeah, more than likely, yeah. I will make you an omelet. Yeah. It's going to be boring. <laughs> But it's gonna be a good omelet that yeah. I will partake. And, you, will, and when we invent smell vision maybe you'll get that much closer. Yes. So uh, phase three of this build out of the new studio is to outfit a studio kitchen. Uh, we just finished phase one. Phase two is to add an additional camera setup to have more guests on the podcast. And then we're gonna start working on the other room where we want to do cooking videos. So bear with us, it is coming. And while Brian works on all that, I'm trying to see if I can cr get us our own scratch and sniffed. For our, for whatever we make. Next question. What is Frenchie's favorite red wine? Well, you've kind of answered this in past podcasts. Uh, I have, right? Podcasts. You're, you're not a red, you're not a, this is how much I know Frenchie. Okay, Frenchie what's, said, what's my favorite wine? Well, the thing is, you're not really a fan of wine. I'm not a fan of wine. That's like. So I'll tell you what my favorite wines are. All the wines that my dad liked. Mm, okay. And so if I'm going to drink red wine, I'm going to order wine that he would order. Right. And which is, give one, give one example. Ah. Uh, Beaujolais Village. Where's and where's this? What part of France is this from? And what's the grape varietal? Do you know off the top of your head? No. <laughs> but it's from Beaujolais. Okay. Yeah. Region. Yeah. Beaujolais Village. Uh, okay. No, there are plenty. Yeah, my father. My father had a. Pal he loved his glass of red wine. And do you have some Beaujolais? Yeah. All right, I, I want to I'll do have that. You want to do yeah, that yeah, tonight? Yeah, let's do that tonight. Okay, yeah, we'll do yeah, that. Yeah, you may make me want to have some wine tonight. All right, that's it for the patrons. We're going to just do a couple of Discord. That was a good question. That was good, yeah. That was like, that set me down. Like, anything that makes me think of my dad is going to be a good question. Sir Guido on my Discord server asks, why is Frenchie so fucking likable? I don't know. Ask my all my exes. <laughs> There's a, there's actually a cutoff point, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Human sheep asks, and that is what we call inappropriate. Oh well, what? okay. I don't what know. did I no, say? I don't what know. did I say now? No, no, no. It's not you. The Discord people, I guess, are getting into it with oh. each other. Uh, here's a question from Dishwashing Bean. Here's a question. I see a lot of toxic work culture in all jobs these days. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that in relation to food industry? Ooh, that is actually a good question. Talk, there's, there's, there are different levels of toxicity. Toxicity, toxicity yeah. in the restaurant. There's, you know, management, work staff, there's kitchen in front of the house. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's, a, there's oppositions all yeah. over the place. Purveyors who, you know, mm -hmm. between purveyors, getting to you i mean you, the restaurant and the customers yeah, yeah there's a yeah, lot yeah there's a lot you know yeah. what scratch all of that biggest toxicity toxic toxicity biggest problem is the goddamn customer <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going to I'm going to talk a little bit on my personal experience. You know, um, I recently was a little extra with my staff. I was extremely stressed out and um, the shop was not doing good for a long period of time. And I definitely uh, while I don't think uh, there's a difference between toxic, but and abusive. I certainly was not abusive, oh, yeah. but definitely I was a bit extra and someone had to check me and, you know, staff, had you know, my closest staff came to me and let me know and I, I made a change and you know I, I recalibrated so to speak and it's very easy to happen yeah it, it comes come our toxic toxicity our toxicity <laughs> comes from duress yeah it's simple it's yeah. stress at least an owner to the staff or the manager to the staff it's, it right? takes it's a from, lot of yeah. effort to like balance 
like that stress and like getting shit done. Yeah. Un un under a time frame under and trying to live your life yeah. on top of it, right? Because yeah, I mean, you, you're you're getting pressure from all the bills and all the obligations. You're trying to make all your staff happy. You're trying to give everyone time, and yeah, you know, I and, and at the end of the day, we're only human as well. Yeah, sometimes like I I tell the <clears throat> the GM like sometimes you get some customers that are toxic and like they make you feel like you ruined their whole goddamn lives. Yeah. And I said I would I would literally I would go up to the customer. Listen, the meal's on me. This is not brain surgery. There's no life and death situation right. here. It's it's just bad. It's a bad meal. That's yeah. all it is. It's this amount of time, you know. It, listen, it's on us. Go. Yeah. Go. Yeah. But like some people think it's like they will make like. And what make the it fuck's like going on with them for them to take exactly, it that far? Exactly. Right. Right. It just it's better off to get. You know, them they're out they obviously having their own problem. Yes. Because you like you and I were having a bad meal. Like yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. Right. Next. Right. You know, I want to order that again. Yeah, <laughs> or I'm not coming back here again. No, nah, we come back. Uh, not me necessarily. Well, how bad? Would, oh yeah, but you're talking about it's got to be bad. Yeah. Like we're not going to that Cuban restaurant again. I can tell oh. you that. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. We were ill. Yes. We were yeah. ill. I wasn't sick. I just. I, I we mean, we were bloated for three days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. What do I was you bloated. eat that makes you bloated <laughs> for? three Three fucking days. Rotten ass food. Holy shit! You, you know, you know what that was? It was food that just was not fresh and on the verge, and it's not toxic and it was fried. enough. It was not toxic they enough to get in that sick. freshness. <laughs> oh my god! All right, we got to wrap this up because we still have a lot to do today, Frenchie. But um, you know, this was a lot of fun, man. Uh, you know, this isn't is, that the whole point? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is our first time also seeing each other since the Guga trip. You know, we didn't see each other for a whole week. And you, it's it's a week. <laughs> Seriously, a week? You get depressed not seeing me over a week? Yeah. That's nice to know. <laughs> All maybe, right, guys. Maybe I should write you postcards in the interim, like in between. <laughs> By the time it gets to my house, I already saw you. <laughs> All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this as much as we did making it. And remember, remember don't be a... F what? I was going to say, keep it so short and sweet. Okay. All right. You okay. told me. You told I, me. That was for the intro. Oh, so now we can just blah, 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 <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right, listen. I'm Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef. Frenchie. <laughs> and we'll see you really soon. Say bye to the wide cam. Bye.